Question 6a is the term 13 from our Leaving Cert course. So let's write down what we're given first of all. So the first thing I'm given is two triangles. The triangle A, B and C are my corners, my vertices. And they will correspond to the similar triangle on the right. And I'm going to label the corners A dash, B dash and C dash because we know with similar triangles, the angles are the same size. So that's the first thing we're given. So let's follow that up by stating the angles that are equal. So I know that angle A is equal to angle A dash. I know that angle B is equal to angle B complement and angle C is equal to angle C complement. So those angles are equal because it is a similar triangle. We know that the angles in a similar triangle must be equal. So that's basically what we're given in our diagram. We can also mark that those angles are equal if you want to maybe color them in on your diagram. Uh, so angle A is equal to A dash, angle B is equal to B dash, and angle C is equal to C complement. Okay, let's write down now what we want to prove. Basically what we want to prove is what's given up here at the top of the page um, in the theorem in our leaving cert. So we're basically just going to write that down. That's what we want to prove. So that's what we would need to prove now. Um, just take a minute yourself maybe to look back on our diagrams to make sure and satisfy yourself that that's the case. Um, Basically, you're showing that the sides are proportional. So the side AB is proportional to A dash B dash. Uh, you're showing then that the side BC on the larger triangle corresponds to B dash C dash. I'm just missing my dash there in my B. And on my third side, AC is proportional to A dash C dash. So that's basically what we're trying to prove that they are equal or in other words, proportional to each other. So now we're going to go down and mark in our constructions. And as you know, our constructions are basically what we mark on our diagram. Um, so to make again life a bit easier here when you're viewing the video, I'm just going to copy down my uh, diagram from up above uh, just so we can follow it. So the first construction I'm going to make is I'm going to mark a point on the larger triangle on the left. And the point I'm going to mark, I'm going to call it B dash dash. So it's going to be it's basically be the mirror image of our angle B, our vertice B and B dash and it's going to be marked on the triangle AB. Now where I'm going to place it is basically going to be the, on the line AB so I'm going to put it here and what's going to happen here is that the where it's located is the same distance from A so the length of that line must be the same length as A dash B dash. Okay so to imagine a line coming across here from B dash over to my new B dash I'm basically putting my uh, smaller triangle into the bigger triangle. So hopefully you can visualize that. So that's my B dash and I'm just going to write that down. So what I've drawn. Okay, so I've marked the point B dash on the line AB and now I also want to state that its length is AB dash dash is equal to A dash B dash. So it'll make sense now when it's written down. Okay, so that's what I know is true. Again, look at the diagram. Basically what that means is that the distance from A to B dash is the same as the distance from A dash to B dash. That's basically what that means. Okay, so next thing we want to mark is the image of C dash over on our larger triangle. And once again, it's going to be located somewhere around here and it has to be the same distance as C dash is from A. So it's going to be located here. So I'm going to label that point. Now I'm going to label it um, C double dash. So it'll have two dashes there because again, all of these C's are the mirror image of each other because I'm trying to keep that similar triangle approach each time. So I'm going to write that down. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm marking the point C dash dash on AC. And I've also stated that the distance from A to C dash dash here is the same distance as it is from A dash to C dash. Okay, so that's basically uh, everything that I want to construct. I have one more construction that I'm going to make and it's just basically going to be a straight line. And it's the straight line which is going to connect B dash to my C dash. So I'm just going to mark it in here. So I'm joining a line from B dash across to C dash. So in other words, basically what I've done here is I basically picked up my smaller triangle 
and I've placed it into the larger triangle so it fits in up here. That's basically what I've just constructed. Again, we just need to write that down. So what I'm going to write down is that I've joined B double dash to C double dash. Okay, so that's all our constructions. Next thing we're going to do now is we are going to move on to our proof. So we are now doing our proof. And once again, as I said at the start of the video, we are going to need a lot of our Theorem 12 knowledge here. So make sure you've viewed Theorem 12 before moving on here. So the first thing we know is that we have two congruent triangles. We have the triangle A dash, B dash, C dash is congruent now to A, B double dash, C double dash. Those two triangles are congruent because we fit the smaller triangle into the larger triangle through our constructions up above. So that's the first thing I'm going to note here um, as part of our proof. So that those two triangles are congruent. Okay, so that's the first thing that I'm stating and I'm basically just going to use uh, a little bit of a process that we did with our congruent triangles. I'm basically just going to be making statements here and I need to give a reason. So I'm to my proof, these are the uh, how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to make a statement and I'm going to also state why that is the case and why are those two triangles congruent? Well, I could, all, I could look at the likes of, um, I could do side angle side perhaps. Uh, that's one way we could have looked at it. Uh, again, remember we can't use the three angles, but I could use the side A, B dash, dash is corresponding to A dash, B dash. So have a look at that and I'm sure you can figure out why they are congruent. But that's one way we could do it, side, angle, side. Okay, what I want you to see now is we're going to look at some angles. So we know that this angle in here, angle A, B double dash, C double dash, is equal in size to this angle here, A, B, C. So those two angles are going to be equal in size. And the reason why they're equal in size is because they are corresponding angles. We could say now that the two sides, B to C, is parallel to the line B dash dash, C dash dash. Those two lines are parallel to each other because we fit that small triangle into the larger triangle. So we know that they are parallel to each other. So basically that's all I'm going to state. I'm going to state that those two green angles are equal in size. And my reasoning for that, the reason for that is that they are corresponding angles. As you know, because they are, the two lines are parallel to each other. Okay, and from that now, because those two angles are equal in size, we can now conclude that the length B double dash C double dash is equal to B C. That they are parallel to each other. So that's what, or sorry, not equal in length, they're parallel to each other. So that's what we can conclude from that um, statement. So we have our two angles are equal. Remember that the congruent triangle fits into that larger triangle. So that's why we are saying that they are, again, I meant to rub out my equals, they're not equal, they are parallel to each other. So we know that the length BC is now parallel to B double dash, C double dash. Okay, now what we can state is that we know from our knowledge of theorem 12, because the two triangles are fitting into each other, theorem 12 now states that those sides are proportional. So from that, we can now state that I'm just going to zoom in here for one second so I can make a bit of room. So we can now state that the, the side AB over A double dash B, so that side there, is proportionate to AC over AC double dash. So just take a second to look at that. So the side AB over A double dash B is equal or proportional to AC over AC double dash. Again, that's because of theorem 12 and we don't need to prove that again. We've done that proof in theorem 12. And from there then, we can extend that even further. We can now say that the side AB over A dash B dash is equal to AC over A dash C dash. We're just basically extending that knowledge of just up above. So again, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can get our picture. If you look up at our picture, what I mean by that is that the side AB is corresponding to AC 
So you can see here that they're the two longer sides and the triangles. And on the bottom of my fracture or the denominators is going to be A dash B dash and A dash C dash. Okay, because we know that that's the same as the length from A to C double dash, just from up here. We know that they are the same thing. And finally, we're going to make our final statement, which from there we can now say that B dash over C, or sorry, B C over B dash C dash is equal to A B over A dash B dash. Okay, so that's basically what we can conclude. And you can see here now that we are basically finished because we have our A B over A dash B dash is equal on top and bottom. So that must mean then that the A C over A C dash must equal the B C over B dash C dash. So hopefully you can see there that you can see that both of these are on the top and the bottom. So logic follows that the other two sides must be proportional as well. So basically what you're stating there, our final answer is basically what, uh, what we wanted to prove. And that was A B over um, A dash B dash is equal to, because that's this part here basically, is equal to uh, BC over B dash C dash, which is this part here. And that is also equal to AC over A dash C dash, which is this one here. Part B is asking us to prove the following and to give a reason for each geometrical statement that you use. So let's just mark off these line lengths first. So AH, we have the line segment QB, we have the line AP, and we have the line HB. Uh, so you can see here that as I mark them off, we're forming two triangles. So I'm just going to join this line segment uh, PHQ. So you can see here that we've made basically two triangles out of it. And what we're gonna basically show is that those two triangles are similar to each other and we'll be able to then make the link to part A of this question as well. So let's write some pieces of information that we know. So let's look at the angle um, QBH. QBH is this angle here. And I'm going to say that that angle is equal to the angle HAP, which is this angle here. And the reason why those two angles are equal is because they are alternating. They are alternating angles. And the next statement I'm going to make is the angle uh, BQH is equal to the angle HPA. And that angle is BQH, I'll just put a little X on that angle, and HPA is this angle here. So don't mind that line segment there, P to K, just uh, imagine that it's not there. And the reason why those angles are equal again is because they are alternating. Now to prove similar triangles, you only need to show two angles are equal, but let's prove the third one. So you could have also used the angle uh, BHQ, which is this angle in here. Let's just put a little square in there. And that's equal to the angle uh, PHA, which is this angle here again in a square. And the reason why they are equal is because they're vertically opposite each other. So now that we've proved that all three angles are equal in both of the two triangles, I can now conclude that triangle HBQ and HPA are similar to each other. And because these two triangles are similar, it means that the lengths of their sides are now going to be proportional. So similar to the proof in part A, we can now say that the side AH is proportional to the side BH. And if you look at the image, that's because I'm going from 
the dot to the square. So I'm just going to write my little bit of rough work there. That's the line segment between a dot and a square. That's equal to, uh, I can say the side PA over side QB. That's going from an X to a dot from my picture. And that's equal to PH <clears throat> over QH. Which again is going from the X to the square symbol. Now at this stage I'm trying to see which two uh, fractions I'm going to use. We're going to just kind of come to the question and see. So it's using AH, so I need to match up an AH, which is here, QB, which is QB, matching up with an AP, AP, and I'm using HB, which is HB here. So I'm ignoring this third fraction basically. So I'm kind of using the question to help me uh, match up my fractions. And by using a little bit of simple algebra here, I'm basically just going to simply cross multiply or basically getting common denominators. And when I cross multiply, I multiply AH by QB and I get, I'm just going to come over here instead of scrolling down, I get AH times QB and that is equal to uh, AP multiplied by BH or that can be also HB. And that's what they wanted to ask me at the top of the question. Prove that AH multiplied by QB is equal to AP multiplied by HB. And we are done. So similar triangles is the answer there to part B.